I can't even see myself, it's so bright outside. But let's go to the movies. Featuring the sound of my squeaky left shoe. Today's agenda, well, there's two movies on the agenda, but first movie is The Book of Clarence. I know there have been a lot of questions regarding this movie and hopefully I can answer them for you. Let's talk about it. So that was The Book of Clarence, directed by James Samuel, stars Lakeith Stanfield, and a whole host of other people. I know a lot of people have questions about this movie. People feel some kind of way. There have been a lot of different opinions since the trailer came out just a few months ago. Stick with me. So this movie is set in 33 AD in Jerusalem, so right at the end of Jesus's ministry, and it's about a man named Clarence, played by Lakeith Stanfield. Clarence is something less than a good person. He finds himself in a financial predicament. He owes a lot of money to a man named Jedediah the Terrible. And Jedediah the Terrible tells him, you have 30 days to get me my money or... <laughs> so he sets up trying to figure out different ways to get this money. But first he figures, hey, why don't I just try to protect myself? So he decides, oh, I'm going to be the 13th apostle. Well, why don't I just get baptized? And if I'm baptized... I will be protected. And then he gets the bonehead idea to become the Messiah. He sees how much money Jesus is getting. Why not try to do the same thing and pretend to be the Messiah, fake a bunch of miracles and get money? That's basically the plot. I wouldn't call this a Christian movie, and I'll get to that in a second, but it's supposed to be a comedy, and I don't know what it is with Lakeith Stanfield, because this is the second movie that I've seen him in, in which it's supposed to be a comedy, and I'm not laughing. I didn't think this was funny. I mean, there are definitely funny moments. I can see the ha-ha, but I was very bored. I, that's a lizard. I was going to try to get him, but he's like going under the hood. I wouldn't do that. Oh, there you are. Come on out. He's so tiny and dark, you really can't see him against like my dashboard and the hood of my car. Oh, bless it. Anyways, back to the movie. The sound mixing is terrible. It got better towards the end, but at the very beginning, I'm like, why is this so loud? The music was very loud and the Foley work was also kind of loud and it was very hard to hear them speak. This movie has really big ideas. This is one of those movies where it's a really big idea. It's a good idea, but it doesn't land. It doesn't clash. It doesn't work. The, what they're trying to do here just does not work. It's a mess. It's, it's kind of a mess. It's like poor slapstick comedy. You might find this entertaining. I didn't. Now, is this movie blasphemous? That's the big question a lot of people have, right? Now, the concept of Clarence, a man who pretends to be the Messiah for financial gain, is not unbiblical in and of itself. Jesus himself spoke about, you know, people who would pretend to be the Messiah. So it's not far-fetched that they would take that little bit and create a story out of it. That's not the problem. There is a creator. She went to the premiere, saw the movie. I'm not going to say her name. Do not drop her at in my comment section. I'm not interested in creating unnecessary drama. I bring her up solely because she was the first review that I saw of this movie on her Instagram. And in her um, reviews, she said, you know, Jesus was portrayed accurately. No, he wasn't. I'm not one to call somebody a liar like that, but like, why are you lying? Like that's straight up not true. Jesus is a side character in this movie. We don't see him much, but the director treats Jesus like he's a magician. That bugged me a little. But the blasphemy part, this is where I'm gonna upset some people. The blasphemy in this movie is not in the character of Clarence. Again, a character like that, definitely biblically accurate. There were plenty of people in Jesus' time who were pretending to be the Messiah for financial gain. So the blasphemy is not in Clarence. The blasphemy is in the all-black cast. It would be one thing if the cast was, you know, majority black, but they were still portraying things accurately. They were still true to the culture. They just decided to take, you know, artistic license and change the look of the cast a little bit, but still portray the story correctly. But they don't do that. The director himself said that it's only fair that we have a movie such as this, a Christian film set in this time, so New Testament era, in which we can see ourselves. So instead of skin color being an artistic choice, which I could be down with that, 
skin color instead serves as a way for black people to look in the mirror and idolize themselves. The director centers blackness and black culture instead of Jesus. It's important for us to see ourselves. No, it's not. It's important for us to see Jesus as he is. And I know this might hurt some people's feelings, but Jesus was not sub-Saharan African with a Nigerian accent. Yes, almost everyone in here had sub-Saharan African accents. I don't understand how that's any better than everyone having a British accent. But no, this isn't a Christian movie at all. This is a movie that's using the Bible for comedic entertainment. Unfortunately, it's not good enough to justify the disrespect. The director had a big idea, but he didn't know what to do with it.